Hey guys, episode two, I got a new guest for you, got some awesome topics. Mainly we're diving into online role playing from Dragon Ball Z to Kingdom Hearts to Sonic. And we're talking about uh, you know the difference between nostalgia and rose colored glasses, just a bunch of topics as we go off the rails towards the end. It's a really cool conversation. I think you're going to like this one. Uh, again, this was filmed on a camera, so the audio quality is shitty, but uh, towards the end of the interview you'll hear us talk about maybe doing a podcast and so from here on out we go away from the camera so hopefully the audio will improve going forward but thanks for bearing with us and enjoy So you just want me to start from the top? Yeah, like just tell me about any like role playing type stuff you've been involved in, like how you got into it and all, gotcha. all that sort of stuff. I honestly don't know how I started getting into it for real. Like I didn't have any friends who was into it or anything like that. Like in real life that put me on. I just was like on AOL dial up chat rooms. <laughs> just going from scratch. I don't know how I stumbled into it for real. I was probably like looking up like Dragon Ball Z shit online. And I just stumbled into like a Dragon Ball Z chat room. Was it like fan art or something that led you there? Or No. I it, this is I was so young at this point. I had to have been like nine or something, nine, ten, around then. I I don't I really don't know how I got started with it. I have no I don't have the answer. It because there's no there's no point of memory that it has like an asterisk next to it. It just kind of happened at some point. So, you were like a super fan of Dragon Ball Z. I mean, as a kid, I define super fan. You know, I watched it every day well, after school. It's it's hard because that show was on every single day. So. Yeah, it's hard to say super fan. I mean, I I guess I was a super fan, but I was just like drawing Dragon Ball Z shit, watching the show. I mean, I think a super fan, I think of motherfuckers that dress up and shit. <laughs> you know, that... <laughs> I don't know. That's why I think a super fan. I watched every episode after school. I think Dragon Ball Z is very specific, because you'll, you'll draw that specific style and stuff like that. Like, yeah. Like, the hair and everything like that. Yeah, no doubt. Like, it's not just drawing. It's very specifically Dragon Ball Z. Yeah, it has, a, it has a style to it, yeah. for sure. And then I would just like imitate that style and just draw in like notebooks and whatnot. Or I had a sketchbook too, so yeah. Yeah, I didn't mean you dressed up like Goku to go to school or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> but when I say super fan, like, you know, if you if you call yourself a super fan of something, you probably do more than just engage in it. You know, you probably take it a super fan. You know, a Star Wars super fan didn't just see all the movies. <laughs> yeah, but he's Role playing in the world, I think he's a super fan. I mean, yeah, but but we're talking about before I got into it, so I wasn't role playing before I, I was just watching the show and like just looking it up on on the internet on the slow ass dial up AOL four point oh whatever the fuck it was. Yeah, and tell me about your experience, like when you stumbled onto it. What were you like? Like, oh, this is weird, or this is awesome, or what? Like, that's kind of gray. It's like a gray area. I don't think I, like, necessarily got it immediately. But I also don't recall thinking, like, oh, this is wonderful. Or this is anything, you know? I just kind of... Yeah, I feel like there has to be some type of, like, impetus for all this. And I just don't remember. Because... In my head, there's no way it played out as me just entering a Dragon Ball Z chat room and then just joining the crowd in DBZ, like, RP, Sim, whatever. But I, I just can't think of what it was, which sucks, but I don't... Maybe there, was, there, there might not have been one, you know? Is it because you were so young? That's why you can't remember? It's not necessarily because I was so young. I just can't remember. Like, there was no like, gateway to it. 
it just kind of happens. Like, no one told me about it. I just discovered it on my own by however, whatever means I did. But, yeah, because I remember having, like, AOL internet friends and shit. But I don't know how. It just happened, you know? I was just a kid. On the, I opened up the computer and just was stumbling around until I found some shit, you know? I wasn't looking for something specific. It just was, like, drunk, stumbling in the dark and just ended up there, you know? It's like the internet is the wild west, especially when you're... Yeah, when you're a kid, for sure. Because, yeah, nobody... There was not, like, a person that opened the door for me and said, oh, check this out, nothing. I was starting from scratch. Did, did you have a, a sense that you were, like, young in part of that community, or it was people your age, or...? No, I definitely felt like I was younger, because there was... I was one of the younger people in it, for sure. I, I'm not saying they are like, old, but I knew I was, like, one of the youngest ones in it, or maybe the youngest, because um, we, we were talking probably more around, like, high school kids. And I was like ten or whatever, you know. So I mean, in in the grand scheme of things, somebody who's fifteen against somebody who's ten, it's not like a huge, but it is. Fifteen to ten is not a five year gap. It's like <laughs> accelerated. Right. So I feel like a, like a little kid in that shit for sure. Did you? Were you honest about your age, or did you present yourself as you were in reality? Um. No, I, I was definitely honest, because I remember, like, they would like, treat me like a kid, you know? I, I don't know why I was honest. I wasn't honest about, like, my name or anything, but I was like, oh, yeah, I'm this age. So there was no type of, like, oh, let me get, like, a, a 50-year-old. There might have been some, there might have been some 50-year-old dudes <laughs> in that shit. I don't know. Because the kids I'm talking about being high school age, they might have been 60. Not all of them, but I know some, because, like, as we, like, as the role-playing like got tighter knit and it was like a website and shit like you could interact with them and then like people would reveal their face and shit like <laughs> with weird webcam images <laughs> reveal their face was yeah is that like a requirement no it was definitely not a requirement but people would you know people just i don't know what made people do it but i don't know they just established them more because i remember at one point <laughs> I had like a weird fucking picture on the website, the RP website. Uh, this down the line, this is when we get to like the Sonic RP, where I had a like profile on the website, where it was just like I was like covering my face, like the hand in front of the face, trying to be like cool. When I was like twelve, <laughs> you know, it's a weird fucking. It, if you look at it, and it's like really shitty quality, because I remember I had. A camera that connected to the computer which back then was like a crazy thing it was this really small little like square camera and i had a fire wire port that connected to the computer so i could upload shit and i thought that was like lit as fuck <laughs> but back then like it was crazy with the dbz rp because just to represent dragon ball z it was just fights and it was exclusively like text speed fights in a chat room and there wasn't any like oh uh, did we i don't i don't think we had our own characters i think we just picked characters like someone would be trunks someone would be vegeta or whatever and you would get into these there would be like a limit a word limit so it would be like five word limit so you had to say like uh kicks him in the head you know <laughs> like, like a minimum yeah that would be a minimum or else because sometimes they have fights where there was like no minimum, like kick punch kick like key blast like it was just everyone was like it was key like it was just like i can imagine the kid just like like slapping the keyboard just trying to get off like the faster ones so there was the short ones where it's strictly speed, and then there's ones where it'd be like longer requirements where you'd have to go into explicit detail about kicking somebody in the head, which was <laughs> like <laughs> just throwing adjectives and fucking nonsense on top of like it's oh man you'd have to describe and I like I would get into the, like the heavy 
high limit shit. So you'd have like two paragraphs about a kick to his head. So it would be like, as he slowly raised the ligaments in his right toes <laughs> with great might. Like, <laughs> the material on his pants would shiver gently in the wind with the force that it would, quite, like, that it would just go on and on about kicking somebody in the head. And like, we'd get into like fucking arguments over whose attacks would connect because I like it was so, there was such a gray area on how to win. Yeah, I'm wondering <laughs> who's refereeing. There was like a judge, yeah. There was like, you'd like say, oh, this person won, and someone would like reach a requirement, and then they'd do the finishing move. And it'd have to be this grand, like 200 <laughs> like words. Six page thesis. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> about the fucking Kamehameha you're throwing at somebody. And like, it would, the onus would be partly on the other person to accept the, and of course, no one's giving in. Like, no one's going to accept that someone just got spirit bombed to death. Like, <laughs> like no, he survived. He, he's walking through the mist. Yeah, because you would do your attack, and you would say the person was defeated. Like, it was like, and he evaporated in the <laughs> dust. And then the, the other person would respond, but then his particles slowly <laughs> collected and reformed. He was not done. <laughs> At the end of every fight on that show, you see someone walking through the smoke. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thinking they're dead, but they're alive. So there's a lot of fighting after, like, no one being able to, <laughs> to settle on the winner. <laughs> so it would just be arguments. It was stupid, you know? Like... <laughs> Because part of winning, the person had to accept defeat. And if you want to just go back and forth forever, you could, technically. But, I mean, when they were in the more competitive ones, there were, like, stricter rules. and But people definitely got dicked over from time to time. Like, it's like, you can't, lose, we can't win like that. And they're like, nope, it's over. But, so, would you spectate or you just participate? I did both because, like, you would have to, they had to set up meetings, you know? It's like, all right, we're doing, like, the uh, Budokai at, like, <laughs> fucking Friday at 6 p.m. Everyone would be on, and, like, there'd be, like, a bunch of rounds, like a boxing match, you know? You'd have to wait your turn to go. And in the meantime, you'd be watching the chat room, and people would, like, just be in there bullshitting at the same time. So it'd be, like, oh, somebody in the audience. And every once in a while, they'd be in the middle of a fight, right? Like, the two people are going at it, and then, like, somebody goes, like, uh, throws popcorn at somebody from the crowd. Like, they interrupt. It's like, yo, get the fuck out of here, man. <laughs> like, just interrupting the battle. It was intense, though. It definitely felt, I mean, it was intense when you're fucking, uh, like, a kid at the AOL and shit. And it, I mean, it was just cool to kind of, people would come together to do that. But it was, as an actual like competition it was severely flawed <laughs> like, yeah. it was fucking ridiculous honestly so were you friends is that ringing no it's my phone ringing yeah. were you friends with any of these people or like in real life like not real life but like outside of your meeting times uh yeah i mean we just like chat in sex you be revealing your face to the world oh shit <laughs> Delete that. <laughs> Delete that part. Yeah, we just, like, chat and tech in, like, I am, you know? So even when it wasn't fucking Budokai... You even when it wasn't talk. fighting, we'd all kind of go back and forth, yeah. What sort of stuff do you talk about with people that you only know through DBZ? Like, it's so specific. Like I don't it, know, man. Is it, is it welcome to, like, bring up other shit? Yeah, we talk about other shit, like, in the chats. I don't know. I mean, I didn't have a lot of, like, one-on-one... -on -one like dialogue and deep conversations with people but everyone would get in the chat and they'd just be bullshitting you know like making fun of each other and shit it was I, you know I spent a lot of time in those chat rooms and I can't really tell you what was going on <laughs> you know like everyone kind of built their own identity in it and would interact with each other through there yeah, it's funny because like I would play MMOs and shit, and there obviously there'd be a lot of talking going on, but it was always like the main focus at all times would be like the game. So I'm just wondering if you were to strip the game away, it was just people. Yeah, because there wasn't about what always. Be doing. Yeah, because there wasn't like there's always battles going on, you know. Right. 
that's interesting to me, but it's probably so lost to time. Like the minutia of what yeah. you're doing. Yeah, because, you know, you're, when you're fucking, like, that young, like, you could be saying a whole lot of nothing. You really, you really can. Was there, like, any girls or just a sausage fest in there? The DBZ one was a sausage fest. Like, For like sure. 100% or just overwhelming? The DBZ one was always the sausage fest. <laughs> the Final Fantasy one had girls. The King of Hearts one had girls. The Sonic one had girls. But DBZ was strictly dudes. Strictly, <laughs> I remember that very clearly. I didn't know you had all the Kingdom Hearts ones in there. Yeah, the Kingdom Hearts one was well, before we get in. Yeah, let's do like one or two more things on this. Okay, okay, yeah. But I want to say that it sounds more like a competition than a role play. Like it doesn't sound. The like DBZ it's... shit was way more competition than role play. Yeah. But that was where it started. Before I started actually the role play shit, it was DBZ. They would say DBZ Sim, DBZ RP Sim, whatever. But, yeah, it was definitely way more competition than roleplay based. So is that like a gateway to the other thing? That or is the other definitely, thing was like no. separate because it was so different? It was a gateway to that thing because it was all, it, like the, the DBZ was the gateway to the AOL chat rooms, ultimately. You know, that's, that's why I started doing AOL chat room shit. Right, because I remember uh, the first time I even learned about role play, which I never did, by the way, mm -hmm. but Schaefer and his brother would do like this Harry Potter role play. Oh yeah. And I don't even think they read the books, <laughs> and I was thinking, they just and, make up their own character and like. Yeah, but theirs was not competition; but it was strictly just role play, and I I didn't understand. I'd be like, "What do you do?" And yeah. like, well, we do a bunch of stuff. I'm like, "But who are you killing?" And stuff like that. There was no objective. Yeah, I was thinking it's strictly in terms of like, how do you win? Yeah. And I did not understand at all. Yeah, the, the Kingdom Hearts one, there was no like objective. Like there would be fights or whatever, but it was just kind of like actual RP, I guess. Instead of the DBZ shit where it's just fighting for right. no reason. So what, what did you move to after DBZ and how did you discover that? Uh, I think I went to Sonic after DBZ. Yeah, Sonic came after DBZ. Um, and I, they actually kind of crossed over. They, it wasn't like I was on to this and then the next I was on to this. They'd come back. Like, I would go back to DBZ sometimes. And I think Sonic and Kingdom Hearts, like, they all just kind of crossed over, ultimately. I can Sonic definitely came next, but then Kingdom Hearts and Final Fantasy was right there, too. And I was doing them both at the same time. But I kind of abandoned DBZ at that point, because that was just fucking... I think even, like, 12-year-old me was like, this is stupid, you know? <laughs> you know? I mean... That's kind of elitist, but... <laughs> How many different ways can you kick someone in the head? I know. And I said, yeah, it definitely probably just got tired of trying to get tiring at some point because we're just fighting. You, you didn't, we didn't have our own characters or anything. We were just, like, fighting as Vegeta, Goku, Cell, or whatever, whoever you want it to be. You know, Kingdom Hearts and Sonic and shit, that's when we started making your own characters. Of course, some people would be just like, oh, I'm Sora, I'm Riku, you know? <laughs> you can't be Sora. Yeah, <laughs> you can't be sore. Can't be fucking sore. But then, or they like pick or the Kingdom Hearts and Final Fantasy the RP. It's kind of like the same thing because people just bring in character. I mean, I if mean, it's Kingdom Hearts, you can just bring yeah, in technically Kingdom Hearts. Yeah. encompasses Final. Fantasy. You can just start wheeling in Final Fantasy characters that aren't in Kingdom Hearts, you know, to it. So that was fair game. Um. Yeah, I definitely had uh my own character and that shit and it was more like I just found some like fan art from some anime I've never heard of I still remember the images it was a cool fucking character but it was definitely a character from it it was fan art of a character from an anime I've never seen <laughs> so you're stealing someone's work of someone's intellectual property yes <laughs> and it's like this is my Kingdom Hearts character <laughs> you can't do that but I didn't know like I'm sure it was from an anime but I've never seen the motherfucker before, so it was like, this is just an original character that I'm, and I'm making his backstory all based around this image, you know, and just writing my own entire character out of an image to where the character in the anime might have been nothing like that, so, yeah. But, do, you, do you remember the character? Oh, yeah. It, the character, his name was Requiem, which I also named my Sonic RB character Requiem. They're both Requiem, and then... They had, they had different backstories, but I don't remember the Kingdom Hearts Requiem backstory. It was just like a random silver-haired anime character. 
Like that, he didn't really have, like, the Kingdom Hearts RP, like that had no kind of context, you know? That was not organized. That was just AOL bullshitting basically as anime characters. So it was a chat room, not a forum? It was a chat room, yeah. AOL chat room. So, because I feel like in a forum, you could read the top posts and you see like the setting and what's going on. Right, and the forum, like everyone doesn't have to be there at the same time. Right, so just walk me through it because I literally don't know. I'm not just playing dumb for the interview. Like, when you log into the chat room, how do you even know what's going on? You just read what's going on and like you scroll back a little bit so you just inject yourself into what's going yeah, on yeah you just show up <laughs> you just show up <laughs> yeah <laughs> like you can see some some crazy shit's going on whatever you just show up just, hey, like, guys, up right here it's like you right know on the scene. yeah that's literally it <laughs> like I think the setting would be in the chat room title so it would be like oh, okay. like Traverse Town you know so you have the setting established, but you would just pull up on the scene in the middle of whatever the fuck is going on, <laughs> you know? Because <laughs> I have to imagine that, like, if you think of, like, Dungeons and Dragons or whatever, there's, like, a, a DM who's the guy who's, like, making the story. Yeah. Because some people are, aren't imaginative enough to come up with scenarios. Like, they can react to what's happening, but they uh-huh. can't just dream up something that's going on in the world. You know what I mean? Right. So I can imagine having a bunch of uninspired people sitting around, like, not even sure what's happening. Yeah, well, definitely. It would not be... Like I said, the Kingdom Hearts RP shit was very uh, loose, you know? People just kind of get in and hang out as characters. And there'd be fights, and there'd be, like, couples or whatever, all that shit. Uh, but there was no organization to it. It was just kind of random. How much do you think people bring to their character? Oh, a lot. Like, for them, for themselves? Yeah. Oh, a lot. Because it would, it would just be like, I, there's no doubt it would be, like, just them, like, expressing themselves through a character. Like, no one would pick, like, Mickey. Like, if you, you know, if, you, if you're Mickey, you have to be Mickey. <laughs> like, you cannot show up and make Mickey, like, a brooding devil. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like... If you if you decide to show up as Mickey, you're gonna have to be Mickey that day. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, the King Hearts. There's not a lot to say about it because it was just more of a like mechanism to like hang out in the chat room and right. be kind of creative because there's no objective or anything. That that's why I asked if you brought more to yourself in that scenario. Yeah. Because if you're not really doing much else, uh-huh. you know what I mean? the Sonic shit was super organized. They had a website, they had like like groups and worlds and missions. The Sonic shit was so, it was like a well-oiled machine the way that shit was run. And like there'd be like requirements to be a certain character, like everyone couldn't be a hedgehog, everyone couldn't be an echidna, everyone couldn't be... Somebody had to be a human. Somebody had to be, like, you know, there are requirements. Like, you had to, like, climb the ladder to be, like, a cool character in that. So, so wait, it's easier to be a human than to be a hedgehog? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Definitely, because no, cause they, they needed humans, you know? They, there wasn't a lot of humans, so they needed humans. So if you were, like, a low on the totem pole, you'd just be a fucking human. I feel like just for the sake of the story. Like, I don't want to be a damn human. There's one kid who ran it who, like set up the storyline you know we have like this season's villain that someone's playing right that's what i mean you need like a dungeon master yeah that one had a dungeon master that one had a website that one was well done and that was like the most intense one by far i I, i'm just curious because the dbz you found like by accident yeah i'm wondering how you found these other subsequent rps um usually somebody in the group from one did the other yeah. Do you need like a like a recommendation or whatever to get it? The Sonic one you did. The Sonic one was like so like high high uh I don't even know what the right word would be. It's just very organized and very like you couldn't just sneak in. You had to like audition and shit cuz they didn't they wanted it was great and 
that's the type of shit you need to do for it to be great. You know, it's organized. You don't let just anybody in. It's what, it has, like, a standard, you know? So what's the audition like? Oh, uh, I think you just RP'd with them, like, the group, and they just see if you were, like, if you contributed anything worthwhile, if you were creative, if you weren't a dick who would just, like, show up and just try to kill somebody, <laughs> you know? Be a fucking player killer. Yeah. Did, what, do you remember your audition process at all? I don't remember, like, the specifics of it. It was just... There was not, there wasn't like a bunch of questions or anything. Was, you don't remember like being nervous or wanting to impress them or anything like that? I can't say I do, you know? I mean, I wanted to, I was like, oh yeah, Sonic Era, it was called Sonic Era. Like that was the RP group. I was like, oh, this shit looks awesome. Everyone has like, I saw the website. Everyone has really cool characters. Cause like some, like there would be people who were actual characters. Like someone was Sonic sometimes and shit like that and someone there was definitely an Eggman you know that was important um but I lost my point what was I saying <laughs> I was asking confused. oh I saw the website yeah yeah the website had, had like crazy it was just awesome it was like it was very well organized it had different like settings from different sonic media like they had shit from like the tv show they had mobius they had the city from like sonic adventure like they had different locations they had it it was just it was very impressive how it was organized and then i think it really made me want to do it so much as like everyone had their own character and they had artwork that was so great like the art like it was like an original character like, I remember he had the one, the one, the guy who ran it had a character that was uh, called Techno. And it was like an orange hedgehog. And it, was, it just looked like crazy. It looked awesome, you know. He had like glowing wristbands and shit. And I was like, oh man. And like everyone had characters. And all the art was like top notch. It looked like actual Sonic shit. It didn't even look like fan art, you know. Would you have to be a damn artist to be part of this thing? No, the same guy did everyone's artwork. The guy who ran it. Oh, it was the guy who ran it. The guy who ran it drew characters. So it's like consistent art style too. Yeah, it was like I said, I don't I can't speak on other like RP groups, but in my mind this had to be like near the upper echelon it's of like that shit. Pinnacle. Yeah. And I'm and that dude definitely put a lot of time into that cuz it was yeah, it was just very well done. Like you probably could have made people pay to be a part of it for real because it was like if you went to RP that was like if you went to seriously RP and like it not be a fucking shit show that was it man like that was like I said upper echelon shit man I wonder what that guy is doing now I wonder too and I have his name so I should google him at some point because I'm sure he still has his like I'm still like, he has to still be drawing at least because he was too fucking good not still be drawing in some sense and sharing it on the internet you know. So so what's the process of him drawing a character for you? Um, you like, come with an idea. Like does he have input or he just strictly does what you tell him? He does what you tell. I mean he has created like the drawing. He'll throw throw suggestions at you or whatever. But like everyone's character, like you have to be your character. There was also like a bar for your character. You know you couldn't say like. Oh, here's my character. He's like Johnny the Hedgehog, and he has all the powers. Like, you know, everyone had to have. There were. It was really strict with how, you know, your character could be. You couldn't be God. You had to have an original character. You couldn't be like Sonic the Hedgehog, but fucking like green. You know, you couldn't just do that. Like, Sonic is fast. That's his thing. Everyone can't just be fast, you know? Like, no one could be. Like, you're very limited in your powers. Like, I know he had the character Techno, and I think he was just, like, a genius kind of thing. Like, he had gadgets and shit. And then somebody else was, like, electric hedgehog thing. And... It was it was it was really cool, man. And someone's just a shitty, boring human. Someone's a shitty human, yeah. So it was just aiding. Did you need to start out as a human, like build up your reputation to be able to be 
headshot? No, I didn't. Like, I... Maybe I was early for it, but I know down the line when it got to a certain amount of people, even you people were coming in, I was like, no, you can't do this. But I, I don't really remember having to, like, get to some point before I could have my echidna character. Because, like... And like a kidney is obviously would be a popular one just because of knuckles and shit. It wasn't like I pulled out that species out of nowhere, you know. Somebody was a rat. Like <laughs> somebody was a rat, definitely. Can't be a damn rat. Not a rat, like a mouse. Like there was because you know, in, in Sonic there are a lot of different characters in the Sonic ethos, you know, if you go through the cartoons and all the different there's there's lots of different things. You know? I was not aware of that. Oh, there's so many characters. If you go through like the chaotix and everything, there's so much. Like, like throw it. There's a crocodile. Okay, there's, I was say, throw something at me, and he did. Yeah, there's a crocodile. <laughs> in in Sonic, there's a crocodile. There's how, how, this is off the rails, but how do humans react to these anthropomorphic speaking animals? Well, I mean, in Sonic, there are humans. Like in, in the games and shit. Yeah, they they don't acknowledge it as weird or anything. Do they have pets? I'm sorry, we're getting off. I don't know the human the human side in Sonic is never really elaborated on to that level. <laughs> but you just go ahead and move through it. They 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 are accepting that these things are out here. You know, it's just what it is. All right, tell me about your character in the process of getting the drawn and everything like that. All right, my character. I still had the name Requiem. I don't know why I like that name. It was like Requiem, and they would just short into like Rec, R-E-Q. And it wasn't a, an echidna like Knuckles. And you know, I don't really know where the idea came from. I know I had to make him a unique character, right? Um, so I drew my concept. I came up with everything. The guy who actually did the artwork, he drew a couple ideas in the process when he drew the official version. But my basic idea was he's an echidna. He has, he's supposed to be Egyptian, like for some just the idea of Egypt, or at least like ancient Egypt, was like a cool concept to roll with. So he was an echidna, and he had um. You know how the echidnas have the quills and like knuckles like has the the quills that look like dreadlocks or whatever. So but my had the kid my kidna had the the quills, but he had like a couple of them were tied with like like mummy wrap, you know, to go with like the Egyptian thing. He would have like a uh, a scarf that like blew in the wind, and sometimes he'd wear like like a scarf kind of like piccolo or something, you know, and. He would wear a turban at times, not all the time, but it would go, come and go, and he had a sword. So now, that's a unique character, you know? <laughs> that's very unique. <laughs> it's an Egyptian echidna that has some ties to ancient Egypt, and he has a sword. It's like that curved sword? Yeah, like the, I don't even know what it's called, but you know, like the Prince of Persia fucking sword, you know? So there's a lot of reference points in there to go off to build this character. And, um, yeah, I, I drew him first on my own, a very shitty version. And he took my ideas and, like, ran with it, you know? He, like, took it to a whole new level. So you said he could have the turban or he couldn't have the turban. Is, is he drawing, like, several different portraits and stuff like that? Is it like an action shot or just a yeah, face the, shot? The, the, the portrait he has is like two. Yeah, he has like the two forms. He has the one where he has a turban on and like the scarf above his mouth. And then the other one's just like him with it down and no turban on. Right. Is yeah. it like he's not just standing there like. No, it's an awesome Michael picture. Michelangelo or whatever. That called. picture is so legendary, dude. Because I was like, yo, I was. When I got that finished artwork, I was like jumping through the fucking roof, yo. Because it, like, I mean, one of the biggest reasons I wanted to join was just so I could have my character drawn by this guy, you know? I wanted to make my own Sonic character. And then when I see, like, my idea, like, actually, like, he took it and took it, like, way beyond what I could have expected, you know? Like, he was like, he took it, and it really, it was like my character. 
like top to bottom, like actualize, you know? And I just, you know, I draw, or I used to draw all the time in my sketchbooks and I have, I make up characters left and right, but never get to the point, it would never be like seeing your character in like a sign game or but the scene this artwork that he did was like it was like as if I made up the character and I saw it in the game, you know? Because it was just so well done. Like the art style was like mimicked the Sonic shit so well. And when it took all the details, he had the scarf, he had a version with the fucking turban, the sword is out. Um uh he has oh the mummy wrap on the the quills. I think I just gotta see it at this point. Yeah. And um oh what else did he have? Like gold hoops around the quills and shit, like earrings on tagged on the ears. Well actually the kitten doesn't have ears, I don't think. But there's the gold hoops on the quills. Um yeah, I can bring it up on my phone here. Alright, I'm gonna start by showing you uh my Oh you have it? Yeah, I have my drawing. How far do you have to dig for this shit? Pretty far. That was just my drawing. I and mean, that's just the head, you know. That besides what's going on right here. It just it looks just, like knuckles. It just looks like knuckles. Yeah, because I kinda just traced like not traced, but I referenced Knuckles Extreme. I was like, alright, there's a scarf and he has the you know the wrap around the quills. Right. Um but then this is the artwork he did, which was fucking <laughs> insane. <laughs> Holy shit, let me see this. Oh my god. Like, look at that blade. Yeah, <laughs> man. Like, this dude was talented as shit. He should have shiny as a motherfucker. Oh my god. Look at his color scheme and everything. Yeah, the color scheme is executed perfectly. Got some like tatters on his clothes. Yeah, the shoes. To stay in the desert. Yep. Oh, oh my god, that's pretty awesome. The turban, like I, I don't know how he's gonna execute the turban. Like, how do you put a tur a turban on like an echidna? But it, like, it's it looks awesome. Yeah. And he he added that like half robe thing, which looks dope. Right, right, right. Yeah, man. What's well, this in the corner? I'm trying to figure this out. If you copy every distributor this picture, just shoot you in the head. <laughs> yeah. Because, <laughs> yeah, people would steal that shit off the Sonic Era site. Like, because it was crazy. Like, he was probably, like... like I, I never saw, like, better Sonic fan art. That's cr shit. It's crazy that he probably spent hours on that. Hours? I paid him for this. Did you? Because I thought you said before that you're surprised he, he didn't make you... No, I said he was surprised he didn't make people pay to join. Uh, he, you had to pay to get your character drawn. How much? Like you, 60 bucks. Really? Yeah. What do you do? It's like, was PayPal a thing back in the day? No. You just mail them fucking money? I have such a... <laughs> <laughs> I can't remember how I, I such paid them, man. Way of thinking of And you know, I don't think it was 60 bucks. I think it was like, like 30. It wasn't 60. There's no way it was 60. There's no way I would have been able to do that like as a little ass kid. I can't... I, I couldn't tell you. How the fuck I paid him? Having to explain to your parents what you wanted sixty dollars for. Right. <laughs> I want them to draw my kid. Uh... Yeah, I can't remember, man. That's a good question. Is how it was paid for. Yeah, that's more of a technology question. Yeah. You know? I just I think of like us using candlelight and shit like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I just send cash in a fucking envelope. <laughs> that's so true. Maybe I did. I feel like that's that might have happened. Do you know where he lives? Like, what state you were sending it to? Yeah, he sent me his address. Wow. I think I might have sent him cash in an envelope, for real. That's shady. He's lucky he didn't get murdered by someone. Like, yeah, you killed me in that RP last yeah, week. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I want to look up, like, if Sonic Era... I know there's no way like, Sonic Era still exists. But I want to... There has to be, like, remnants of it on the internet. Do it right now. There has to be some type of... Evidence that this was a thing, you know? Look up his name and look up Sonic Era and see what we got. Sonic Era. RP. Damn, it's like there's no. Damn, there's definitely Sonic RP that's still going on, but. Yeah. 
Well, before I spend fucking 20 okay. minutes trying to... We'll see if his it. name will bring anything up. I'm curious to get that on camera. Alright, let me see his name. It's Rob something. I know it's in that artwork. So you didn't find nothing for your Sonic. own Sonic group? No. Robert. Should I leave his name out of the video or does it not? Matter? You might want to leave his name out of the video. <laughs> Just... <laughs> He's gonna remember you from you invented your requiem. So. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm like, shit, I remember that. RP. All right, we're getting off track though. All right, damn, it just sucks. Oh, I never finished. Look, explain when you said it sucks when you couldn't find him. Explain what you mean by that. I mean, I just want to, like, that was, there's a lot of good artwork that, from all that, and there's a lot of, like, the website was so well done, it just sucks that there's no history kept from it, you know, it's just lost in the internet. Like, I'm sure, like, the hosting sites got, like, shut down, and they probably made it, like, fucking GeoCities or something. <laughs> no, the website was good. It wasn't GeoCities. But it was, you know, it's gone, I guess, you know? I mean, I gotta dig deeper just to find this shit. But maybe if I do a Google reverse image search of the Requiem artwork. Yeah, or you can try the Wayback Machine. Do you know about the Wayback Machine? Uh, I loosely know about it. That just like took screen caps of old websites so you can still technically click around even if they don't exist. Anymore. Right. But like, so do you feel like nostalgia for that time in your life? To feel nostalgia, is that to feel like you miss it or just you talk about it and remember it? Either one really. Because I don't miss it. It was awesome, but I, I couldn't see myself doing it now. It's not like I wish I could still do that and it was still around, you know? Like, like, I could say I have nostalgia for, like, a game or something, like a video game, and be like, the nostalgia is big. I, I miss having that type of fun. But I don't even say that, because I can't, I don't think there's any way that in 2018 I'd be able to find joy from that. Like, the RPing and shit. Like, the actual typing. Like, you know, I think making your own characters is awesome still. But I don't think I'd be able to actually engage in, like, a fucking storyline built. At least not like on a... I mean, I think the, if there was like an organized thing like Sonic Era, that would be, still be fun. But like, just like chilling and doing like DBZ and King of Hearts shit, there's no way. <laughs> you know, there was, that was nothing that was going on. Like, the super like high intensity, strict Sonic Era shit. Yeah, that, that, could, that might still be fun. But it's not like I... You know, I don't, I don't miss it necessarily. I, I, I think it's nostalgic in the sense of, oh yeah, I spent a lot of time doing that, and it was fun, and uh, like there's a lot of, you know, it was like a big chunk of, like, you know, that that gap, that because I, I still don't call it, like, childhood, but it's like that, uh, like twelve, thirteen, fourteen year old section. Or it's actually like 10, 10 to 14, like that four year section or whatever. Because I think like once high school came around, I was done with it, you know? Yeah, I wonder if like at our current age, if we could even fully immerse ourselves in, in such a thing like that. Like I think it's just different yeah. being a kid. Yeah, it's definitely different. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But like it, it took me a long time because like my equivalent is like MMOs. I was never right. into role playing so right. but it took me a long time, like even like a year and a half ago I would try to go back. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and it it's like dawned on me that it's just it's not well, the same. Another yeah. thing that's so I think integral for when it comes to that like those AOL chat room RPs and shit that I do, uh, or I used to do, i I did do is that it was, I think that time of internet was like very like conducive to it you know if there was youtube i could have watched endless videos i might have never done any of that but we were on shitty dial up aol just doing text bait there no text messages on your phone it was like that was it you know that's 
the epitome of what I could use my computer for, really. Like, now, it's just so, like, the internet is so much bigger now than it was back then. Wow. That's, that's crazy to think that it was able to exist because of the limitations. Yeah, because it was, yeah, it's definitely because of the limitations of the internet at the time. Because... There's no, yeah, AOL chat rooms aren't even a thing anymore. Like, chat rooms aren't a thing, you know? Chat rooms used to be huge. Like, AOL chat rooms is like, you know, there'll be different lists of topics. You can just stumble into chat rooms and talk. Now, I mean, forums now, you still have forums and whatnot, but it's not the dynamic. The platform is just different, you know, than a chat room, an AOL chat room. Right. Yeah. That's crazy. I always think of, like, poetry, where you have those rigid fucking rules that you have to stick to yeah. and then you end up coming with something crazy because you're forced to because you're forced to mm-hmm. that's kind of cool that's definitely what like the RP is because it's you know at this point like even like an MMO like that would just supplant going online right. typing but there wasn't an there was nothing like that. Nothing right. popularized anyway. Yeah, and God, anything at that time that was around, like you had, I sure as fuck didn't have the type of computer to run that shit <laughs> or the type of internet connection to run that shit, you know? Right. I, I think those games have existed since like the 90s and stuff, but yeah, they didn't start getting popular until much later. They weren't highly accessible until much later. But it, it's, it's crazy because like I was saying before, like I would try to go back and I... It's like looking her child in the face and realizing it's not as fun as you remember, at least not anymore. Right. Well, yeah, that, I mean, that's that was the equivalent of going outside and just having, like, sticks to play with, basically. <laughs> like, I'm outside, but all I got is these sticks. It's like, I'm on the internet, but all I got is a fucking AOL chat room, you know? Right. But that's all you... That's It was perfect in that point. Oh, yeah. Like, 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 like you said. There, there wasn't, like, a sense of, like, oh, man, this is all I got. Like it, yeah, like, this is the epitome. This is, like, the most you can... This this is awesome, you know? I'm in a chat room with, like, 20 people all talking at once. This is nuts, you know? <laughs> like, that's totally uh, a product of the time period of internet shit. Right. You know, <laughs> it's just it's like the golden age. I've I've had this thought myself about the golden age. Like, man, I'll never be as fully immersed into a game as I was. Oh yeah, times and stuff like that. And you get some of the stupid, some of the stupid, like signing on to AOL, which is a process of fucking hearing that <laughs> and all that shit, and then it's like welcome, and it's like that was exciting, you know, booting it up. You get home from school. And just waiting for it to connect. I'm like, all right, let's go. They probably already started without, you know? Right, right, right. So, like, that is, that's, like, a reward that you can't have now, but it's, like... Now it's just, it's just immediate. So that is, like, the definition of nostalgia, because that sucked. But just because you yeah. went through it, <laughs> it makes it kind of endearing yeah. in, the, in the past in your head. You put it on a But, like, if you get, like, I wouldn't be, like... Back then, if, you, if there's a click, I'm connected to the internet. Mind you, signing on AOL is just connecting to the internet. It's not even going somewhere. It's just connecting to the internet. Like, that's the equivalent of actually plugging in your ethernet cord, you know? And, like, back then, if you said, you can bypass this, I'd be like, oh, bypass it. Give me, <laughs> like, fuck this. But just because yeah. it's the past and it's nostalgia, and I was like, oh, man, it was so exciting. Yeah. But if you if you just took away my internet now and made me do the <laughs> dial up connection every time, I'd be like, fuck this. Like, I wouldn't be like, oh, I remember this now. I'm get that that good old joy back. No, I mean, that sucked. That fucking that was fucking trash. That, yeah, that's definitely nostalgia. That's that rose colored nostalgia. Yeah, yeah. It's something that was like objectively ass. Like there's nothing good about it that you remember. And be like, oh yeah, that was great. You know. <laughs> so I. I just have a couple more mm-hmm. things I'm curious about. Like, did you tell your friends about this? Like, your real life friends? Or it was just locked down? So I think I, I tried. I think I tried to tell people about it. No one, no one, no one I knew got into it, you know? Like, eventually, like, there was, like, a girl I went to middle school with that, like, would come in and do the Sonic RPs and shit. And she kind of became part of the RP group for the Kingdom Hearts shit. Like, that was it, you know? No one else did it. 
did you like try to explain it to them and they didn't get it or they just oh yeah i definitely or, or i would what? definitely try to bring people in but no one was interested you know? right i remember just not understanding because like like i said it was a harry potter thing i never liked harry potter yeah, i, I mean, just didn't even understand like what they were trying to tell me at all it's hard to explain it really takes like a suspension of belief, you know. It's like, oh, what do you mean? You're how are you sonic? And just go on and say, hey guys, I'm sonic. Look at me, I'm sonic. <laughs> you know, no, it's like you gotta, especially if you're trying to explain it to other like kids. Like, I, I think it takes a certain level of fucking. I won't say maturity, but I guess maturity. You know, to understand the concept of role playing is you're playing a role. It's not just like. Treat me as Sonic, you know? <laughs> I'm Sonic and I demand to be treated as such, <laughs> you know? Because explaining that to someone that's not really open-minded to that, it sounds fucking stupid. Like, it's always going to sound stupid. Right. Like, even, like, I could, you could play this fucking shit for somebody and uh, the whole explanation of Sonic Air could still just sound stupid, you know? So. Right. Cause yeah. I, I, the reason I ask is because I basically had one friend who I was into super nerdy stuff with, yeah. and we used to have like keywords and shit like that, so nobody would know what the fuck we were talking about. And I didn't feel comfortable talking about yeah, I mean, Pokemon when I st- cards and shit to most people. Yeah, I mean, when I started like with the DBZ or or like role playing shit, like a lot of kids weren't even on the computer like that, you know. Like I was definitely one of my old, like. The kids I knew when I was that age, like, I, I was definitely, like, the only one, or at least one of the only ones that spent a lot of time on the computer, you know, on AOL chat rooms. Most kids weren't allowed to go into AOL chat rooms. I remember that was a thing. It's like, I'm not allowed to go into AOL chat rooms. I'm like, oh, you know, I don't think, I, I was never, like, banned from, like, I never, I don't think, like, my mother even knew I was on, in AOL chat rooms, you know? <laughs> Do you think... <laughs> You, if she knew what you were doing, you would have been banned? Like, was there anything bad going on? No, yeah, there was nothing. It was, it was pretty wholesome. Like, even looking back, you you were like, yeah, I probably shouldn't have been doing that. I mean, later, like, the Kingdom Hearts shit, like, when, when I was probably, like, 12 or 13 or whatever, and then there was, like, high school kids, and, like, they were, like, there was some shit going on at, with that group where like one of them like had even flown out to meet somebody oh, shit. I never got that deep with it but then I remember one of the girls had like nudes going around in the email what yeah and yeah that 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 got kind of but that was at that point I was like 13 which is old enough to see some titties <laughs> <laughs> so you were part of the email chain oh yeah I saw it <laughs> well, she sent it to me oh she sent it to you yeah which is so, she was just kind of like she was a loose, loose member of the group yeah huh? you can say that I thought I thought they were getting around not that she was sending no no nah, she said she, she was sending them to people wow yeah uh, so yeah the King of Hearts shit the Final Fantasy King of Hearts shit that kind of got a little period of time because I, I, I like as it went on the RP shit started to go out the window it just became like a group of people that would like talk you know and, like normal like it was just like we knew each other from the RP but there was like a just like a chat room we all like a private chat room the same like 10 to 15 people would go to and just kind of bullshit in so down the road it'd be but the, the DBZ shit and the Sonic shit was all very PG, you know. Right, and now these days, if I had a kid, I don't know about what them touching the internet. Yeah, because yeah, I mean, I remember all the fucking talk of AOL chat rooms and how dangerous they were. Like, do you remember that? Like, a the AOL chat room being considered like dangerous. Well, because it could be kid. like a man. Behind. Yeah, yeah, because that's but that's even if like I think Dateline or whatever. Yeah, even. It only gets dangerous if you start engaging in shit like fly out to meet me and that type of shit. And um, I remember there was, I talked to like one girl on the phone off of that shit when I was a kid. Yeah, but that's the furthest that shit ever went. Like I would never do like 
I need I need to use my real name, man. Like, How long did that go on the phone for? We only called each other like twice because it was just weird with kids and didn't have shit to say, you know. It was very childlike. Like, oh hi. <laughs> like there was no conversation really it was just like oh we called each other on the phone and we could say we called each other on the phone in the chat room later you know right i think i might have been slightly older but i definitely was like had like a a thing with some girl from video yeah games. yeah be, like that's how i saw my first boobies <laughs> <That's hilarious. laughs> on, on the very first like not even Skype, it's like pre-Skype video chat. Shit would be oh, you had video chat at that point? Blurry play. and slow. And yeah. But then boobies. And then one girl... No, oh, that just shut off. But, um... Yeah, the one girl was in the nudes that went around. It was just like AOL email. Like... I can't believe she just sent it over. <laughs> she was just sending... She was like proud. Uh, she would like... You had like... She wouldn't just send it randomly. Like, you had to... People saw it and they were like, oh shit, you saw it, like, her pic, like, no, like, ask her from her and she'd say, like, oh, you want to see it too? You know, she, I don't know. <laughs> she was definitely, like, you know, trying to be whatever, seductive or whatever. Right. I don't want to slut shame. That's, that's <laughs> one way of doing it. I don't want to slut shame, but she was definitely trying to share that. <laughs> I asked, I remember I asked Emerson, like... You just exposed them that it was Emerson. <laughs> I, I, I used to bleep out. No. <laughs> I <laughs> You're right, I did. But, yeah, I asked him, like, what that all that experience had meant to him. You know what I mean? And he tied it. He said, well, like, it made me want to be a writer or stuff like that. So I'm just curious, like, like what you got out of it ultimately. You know what I mean? I definitely attribute... Um, a lot of my vocabulary <laughs> and a lot of my spelling to that. Like, I'm a really good speller. Like, I won the spelling bee and shit. But I, I remember in fourth grade, this is so this is right around the time I was really doing this shit. I won the spelling bee in middle of school, and I was like, I won it for the whole school from, you know, first to eighth grade. And I won the whole thing, and since no fourth grader had ever won it before, they didn't realize that you couldn't even send a fourth grader to the next level. So they had to make an exception for me because you know, that was the only time the fourth grader won. But that was solely because I was on that fucking RP shit. I guarantee you. That's the only reason. It's not because I loved smelling in school. It's literally because I spent a lot of time typing RP shit online. Um, and... You know, like, I'm doing the transcribing shit now. Like, it's still, like, that ability stems directly from that. My typing ability stems directly from it. Photo, the fact that I can Photoshop shit stems directly from it because the first copy of Photoshop I got was from someone from the RP group who had, like, a hacked version and sent it to me through fucking AIM with the, you know, the direct transfer shit that took two days <laughs> to send me... It wasn't even Photoshop, it was Paint Shop Pro, which was like the, the Photoshop competitor back then that I don't think exists anymore. Um, because what he would do was, for his RP characters, he'd take like anime drawings and he'd change colors on them and make his own character out of it. And I was like, oh, that's awesome. I want to change, I want to be able to do it, send it to me. And so that's the reason I even got into doing Photoshop and all that. Is directly from there. Um, so, yeah. And, oh, like, the Kingdom Hearts, we had our own website. Like, I made the website on there. Like, I learned HTML for that site. Like, all that comes from the RP and shit. So, it actually had a pretty big impact. Like, it definitely, like, opened a lot of, like, computer things. Like, I'm sure back then you realize how much, like, those things are like staples for like I, I don't know if I really realized back then how big of a deal computers and the internet would be now you know because it was like such a like streamlined isolated thing I used it for but then like all that shit branched out into it so learning 
at a young age Photoshop and HTML, like having that understanding at that point definitely makes all that shit, you know, way more, uh, I don't know. I mean, it just it just started. It's like the foundation, you know. To have it's always good to have a foundation when you're a kid. You know, it's easier to learn piano when you're fucking four years old versus when you're forty, for whatever reason that is. It just is. I don't, I don't know if that has to do with like the brain or whatever, but just having that foundation right. it helps a lot. So yeah, all that shit is from because of RP. That's so cool to me because, like you said, you had friends who weren't even allowed on there. Yeah, I weren't even and allowed. You are like learning like actual useful life skills. Yeah. You know what I mean? You're not just bullshit and trying to justify it. Like the, these are true things. Right. I remember, exactly. I remember um like when I was playing in MMOs, there was like an actual economy to these games and there's like an auction house and shit like that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I would be at school, like checking up on the prices and stuff like that. Yeah. I was learning how to buy Buy low and sell high. Yeah, yeah. And I do, do that on Amazon now. I make real life money. Yeah, yeah it's like definitely. That. I mean, hey. I mean, I, I guess it also stems stems from the fact that I don't think you or I were like stupid kids. Like I'm sure, we, you know, I, it, like, you know, everyone, people with the same access to shit wouldn't have done the same shit with it. But right, I, it's, it's kind of like you need to have money to make money, sort of thing, where you have to start somewhere with it yeah like i'm sure like if i didn't role play just based on who i am i would it's not like i would have turned out to be a terrible speller and you know <laughs> just it, computer illiterate but without it, it but it helps a lot yeah like that's all like i said it's the foundation and yeah sometimes you don't even realize things about yourself i remember because because i never tried in high school or whatever uh-huh. i never really realized that i was kind of smart so, yeah right <laughs> you know what I mean you might not even realize that mm-hmm. yourself. yeah like the internet especially because I was like on like the chat rooms and shit on doing the RP and shit that young so if you talk like I don't know I don't know when it started but I would say I had to have been like 9 or 10 but just doing all that shit that young is like because even though it was smaller than it, it was still huge, you know. It kind of, like, accelerated me to an extent, you know. Just because I've learned more shit. Like, I, 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 just being online, you learn, I mean, I feel like I've learned more than I learned in school. Just That's doing shit online. Definitely. As a kid, way more. Like, shit I learned in school, like... I don't I couldn't even tell you what half of that shit was. It's because it's not useful stuff. It's not useful at all. But, like, I just feel like being on the internet, and, I mean, no one, like, told me, oh, you need to do this. So it was just, just my own curiosity. And it's, it's funny how, like, because I hadn't thought about that either. Like, me learning Photoshop and shit, like, and ha- even having Photoshop, it just came from me wanting to change the colors on, like, anime characters so I could make my RP character cooler, you know? Yeah. And, like, that is such, like, a huge, like, it's, it's, it's such an important skill that I have now. And it just stems direct, like, I can correlate directly to that. I never thought about that before, you know? So that's crazy. That's awesome. I, I think it's also cool that, like, I remember when, when we met, uh, remember you were, I was just drawing, you were drawing yeah, anime, anime characters shit. in like biology class. Yeah, definitely. And I don't think we started hanging out until like the next year, but that's when yeah. I was like, oh shit. I was just drawing anime shit for some reason. Yeah. Because bi- biology, I failed that class. <laughs> but yeah, but like I said, I wasn't like super comfortable admitting that I liked anime and shit like that. So, right, so right. I saw someone drawing and, anime. But I think it was actually like lost that when we really started t- talking about. Yeah. Definitely. But that was the beginning. That's crazy. Well, I remember. I remember drawing biology class in the day. Yeah. And that was all. And I mean, the, me sketching shit, that, that that predates the RP and thing, too. Like, I had always been into anime. Like, I mean, you know, Toonami shit. And I'm, I'm not saying I was like a fucking anime guru. I'm just like 90s kid that came up on Toonami, which is like. I mean, that's the gateway to any, like. 
anybody in our age range that's into anime, their gateway is probably. I mean, that's not true because I am now. Now it's like more popular. It's easy to just kind of stumble into it, but like back then it was like Dragon Ball Z, Tenchi Muyo, and whatever else they had on Tsunami at that time. So yeah, I was always drawing those characters back then. That DBZ style. Yeah, DBZ style. And then I would draw like King of Hearts shit, and I tried doing war. I drew like Trigun. I, I drew a lot. I drew a whole lot. I had sketchbooks filled with shit, man. They're still around somewhere, but I don't really sketch anymore. That's just a lot more important, these skills, than biology. Way more. <laughs> way more important. Because, I, I mean, that's really... I mean, that's, that's creativity, ultimately. Like, I, I, I've been, I, was, I started drawing anime characters before I started writing music, you know? I tried to make my own anime characters before I tried to write my own song, so, yeah. Start somewhere. Yeah, I, I mean, I think just having, yeah, like just being able to exercise creativity is important, no matter how it's done, so, it all kind of, like, I, I, I don't know, like, <laughs> physically, honestly, it's like using the same part of your brain or whatever, you know. It's good to it. I I I guess I attribute more just to being able to think like do your own thing, you know, because outside of that, I mean that's not really like a normal thought process. You know, it's like all right, I want my own Dragon Ball Z character, like make up my own. Because like I mean, even people play instruments. A lot of people just play some like I met mean, people who like are great like piano players and just they don't write. I mean, even like look at my like my father and he's never written his own song. He's been playing piano for his whole fucking life. You know, he does jobs like lots of people just play, but don't create. Like there's a difference, you know. Yeah, there's a big difference. So just to even think like that, I mean, it kind of I guess started there. Is like let me make my own characters, you know, you know, make my own thing. So. Yeah, so just you know, you have to have a certain level of audacity to even attempt to make your own thing. You know, <laughs> it's it's kind of like <laughs> you have to really. There's like a barrier there to even think you can make your own thing. You know, it's some people really struggle. Like even when they're making a character name or something. Yeah, if you see someone running around. There'd be 10 people running around the MMO, Sephiroth, with different spellings. <laughs> you know I mean? Right, yeah, you yeah. You can't even create yeah. a name. Yeah. Like, some people just don't have any Yeah, it's def- definitely, definitely. A name. Just can't even think of a name. Just, yeah, I don't, like, even if you look at, like, people's, like, gamer tags and shit, like, what's that? <laughs> like, it's, like, it's, like, I was, like... When I'm on 2K, I see, like, LeBron the King. Like, really? You're just LeBron the King? That's who you guys are identity? Like, LeBron the King won. Like, okay, man. <laughs> you know? Yeah. So, yeah, like like you said, I mean, a lot of this started within ourselves. Like, it's not that we could attribute it 100% to these things. But right. it definitely, like, it was, like, a catalyst or something like that. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. It's pretty crazy. And it's, I... I know I didn't realize a lot of these things were as important as they were, and I think you didn't either until a certain point in this conversation. You're like, oh, damn. Yeah, yeah. They're, yeah. like, more important than you realize. Definitely, definitely. And it's, like, worth thinking about and, and talking about. For sure. Without a doubt, yeah. Like like you said, I didn't, I didn't, in my head, I didn't hold it that highly. And I was like, oh, yeah, you know, that kind of is responsible for this and that, you know. I, gotta, I wouldn't have done this without that, you know. So, yeah, it's really, it's pretty, like, it's like important shit, you know? It's not just Sonic role-playing. You know? it's, it's not as dumb as it sounds, man. <laughs> my, my kid's not going to be prohibited. My, my kid's going to be oh my God. forced now, to role-play. This shit now is just like, I don't even know. I, like, it's just so endless now with the computer shit. You know, I remember getting like my first like music recording program and that was crazy. Like that was wild. But now it's like you shit motherfucking shit comes with the install. You know? <laughs> yeah. It, it's kinda wild to think about being a kid with a computer now. 
kid. He used to be like the only kid on the block. I remember when my dad grew up, he was like the the family with the TV. On the <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. That's crazy. The family with the TV. I know that was definitely a thing. Yeah. Okay, yeah, kids are like shit now. That's wild. I can't imagine growing up now. Yeah, it's funny because now, like, sometimes I, I would think like, man, I'd be jealous of the kids who grow up now. But but like Not. we were talking about that poetry analogy. Before. Yeah, because I definitely I was about to say that I definitely feel like now your kids are just so numb to it that they probably don't do really. Yeah. Actually, do anything with it, you know? It's just kind of all. There's just so many things they could do that they don't do anything. <laughs> right. It's like, it's like uh, you're just paralyzed by your the sheer amount of options. You know, right. just do nothing. Like I remember how big of a of a deal it was when I got my first camera. Like that was crazy. Now you just already. Have now it. you you got a camera. Every device has. Your fucking Your microwave fridge, yeah, it has a fucking camera. <laughs> so like the way your a kid's relationship to a camera now is totally different than mine. Cause like you know I got a camera and I was the only kid with the camera, but I was the only kid that wanted a fucking camera at the same like a video camera. And we get together, like, we made those Beyblade videos and shit, and it was, like, all fun. Like, everyone was just in it, because it was like, oh, shit, you got a camera, let's do something with it, you know? That's, that's fun, you know? Because, like, you know, you wouldn't know why I was doing that. Like, I was the only kid with a fucking camera. Like, we hang out, we, we do something with the camera. Let's just make something up with the fucking camera. But right. now it's like that was me with a fucking eye toy. Yeah, yeah. It, it sits in one steady position. You could not frame anything except for one way, and that was the first shit I ever did creatively. Right. And yeah. now you're everyone has a camera. Like you, you're not gonna do anything with it. It's just right. like your camera. You know, just Take FaceTime, yourself. selfie, whatever. Yeah. You're not thinking of anything. You know, it's that that poetry shit is real. The fact that it was hard to do. Made like me, I made me do so much more with it, or just try to do way more with it. Like, I didn't get a camera to take pictures of myself, right? You know, man. I, I just remember, like, when we were seniors in high school, the incoming freshmen got fucking iPads, and they had iPads for, for real. iPads, I thought it was laptops, maybe it was laptops, but. Or maybe I no I remember we're seniors yeah as we graduated the kids that came in the class after us got iPads yeah and I remember, I remember that and day. I was hella jealous we but, had nothing right we so had, we were like the last kids because I remember actually I remember kids having laptops in school right but but I remember, like freshmen having laptops I we never so. I remember I remember hearing they were getting iPads I never saw an iPad. But and I always latch onto that like man the younger kids are are it's lucky. crazy we were like the last. Yeah. We're the end of it, you know? I remember, like, yeah, I remember, like, you had an iPhone. That was a big deal. And we're, like, all crowding around your iPhone. Oh, I, I did? Yeah, you had the iPhone. And I remember, the, I still had the little fucking red T9 bullshit. <laughs> and, like, you were the only one with the iPhone at first. It's fine, like, I did? Like, yeah, I, no, yeah, you, were the kid with, you were the kid with the iPhone. <laughs> I was like, someone else in the high school had the iPhone, but you were the only kid in that, like, lunch table. I had a fucking iPhone. Wow. I remember watching videos on your phone because you could watch videos on your, your on your phone, you know? Like, I can't watch videos on my phone. That's yeah. fucking crazy. Oh, yeah. That was, like, literally the the line. We, we were at the cutoff point of the end of no technology to technology. So, like, I literally... Like, <laughs> I don't know what school was like with technology. Right. I didn't have, like, after high school, was, I'm, I was schooled over for me, so I'm not fucking, I don't have a laptop. I've never been in a school environment with a laptop or anything typing. I School for me is strictly pen and paper. Taking you know? notes. Yeah. And now it's like, I can't imagine school now. That's probably wild. I only do shit. I've seen, I saw, like, a video of kids, like, in class playing Fortnite. <laughs> like, that's nuts. Like, <laughs> that's fucking crazy. Like, how could you 
pay any attention. Yeah. <laughs> like, I would never. And how could you keep your cool and, like, not blow the... Oh, no. In Fortnite, especially, the, the kids are screaming. Like, like, they win, and they're like, oh, and everyone's, like, goes nuts. Yeah. In the middle of class. Like, it's, a, like, a viral, like, video I saw on Instagram. Yeah, I wouldn't... I don't have... Oh, I don't have any attention to give in class. Right. I mean, I barely had attention to give in class without the shit. <laughs> like, <laughs> class fucking was just trash. <laughs> class was trash. Class was fucking trash, <laughs> man. I didn't take notes. Fuck all that. My fucking hands would get tired. <laughs> I'm writing this shit down. Mm-hmm. That shit was so stupid. I mean, we turned into a podcast about school being ridiculous. I was thinking halfway through this, I was like, man, why don't I just make a podcast? I think it'd be dope. You could make an endless, like, honestly, I think a podcast would be dope because I could just run my mouth forever, ultimate. I just, when we're talking about shit, shit, like, there, there wasn't even a lot of structure to this, you know? It was just kind of... No, there was, I think there was. There was some structure. It's like, weeks ago, I marked down... Right, we, had a, we had a about. topic, but, like, it was the topic where there's shit to talk about, which is a lot of shit to talk about here. It's like, you know, like... When you, me, and Keith we record shit. Yeah, I mean, I like always, we had a topic. It's funny because I always I bought a recorder and I always wanted to record our conversations. Yeah. And it just dawned on me now that like maybe that's something I would be interested. Did we just in. sit around and with the yeah, intention we, of having a conversation? Yeah. Sometimes we went to the fucking diner or something like that. I do remember sitting down, but I mean, in the beginning, I don't remember sitting down with the intent of having no, a conversation. I think I just like had it in my pocket and just turned it on. Yeah, yeah. I do remember down the line sitting down with the intention yeah. I remember actually recording on the camera the fucking conversation before Yeah, I remember that vividly I don't know what happened to that footage cause, cause like my initial idea of this was that we get into like super nerdy stuff like like my guests would talk about shit that they wouldn't normally talk about yeah, yeah. and that's where well I'm sure if somebody comes on here and talks about their fucking hentai addiction <laughs> they're not wearing what their name attached to that <laughs> shit <laughs> like, hey, man, it started or I was just watching you know <laughs> I feel like you could deny your voice in a way that you couldn't deny your face oh yeah well plus it I depends mean, on how familiar people are with your voice right. and I'm not gonna have the ego and be like this is gonna blow up like, <laughs> it's gonna have like 25 views right <laughs> so yeah man maybe I think I have the original clips from the episode I did before maybe I could just go and take the effect off our voices and yeah. I still need a name for the fucking thing it's just a joke name right now uh-huh. if you think of anything let me know uh-huh. like what's a podcast name about nerdy stuff Oh no! It could, I, I don't think it matters. <laughs> name, podcast names don't matter. Well, I think like the right Ricky chance. That's that's sh- that's a shitty name. Yeah, but it's so specific. <laughs> you never forget it. But it, like it, what? It, yeah, it, it's very. If specific. it was just called Six Years Pod. Oh yeah, you're right. You're, you're, right. you're really good at coming up with names. <laughs> yeah, I'll think that. of some names. Uh, I don't have like shit to throw at you like. Off the top of my head, I mean, I could, but who knows what the fuck we're gonna get? We're gonna get like pasta machine four. Pasta machine. Just keep. Don't give me any more. I don't <laughs> just keep it in the back of your head. Yeah. Okay. I'll think and of something. Like the ones that come off the top of my head are just fucking ludicrous. Like. <laughs> and keep some like if if a topic comes into your head, or if like you think like oh like you're like oh Greg might have something to say on the pod or something like that. Just just let me know. You know what I'm saying? Uh-huh. But this could be dope. Oh, yeah. I guess they're awesome. And I'm just glad that I won't have to write out the subtitles <laughs> anymore. That's, just That's painful, yeah. <laughs> the subtitles. Right. I just, I want to, I, I kind of want to take a lesson from Right to Ricky Sanchez that they just throw the shit out. Oh, yeah. And, and it's, it's pretty good. Idea. Oh, yeah. I and think, it's I think, sort of more intimate when there's a mistake or something. I think it's, there's a value to just unedited conversation. Yeah. Like, I think like most of the podcasts, like, nothing's really edited, so it's like, Point me, like it's, it's usually just people just running their mouths. You know? right. Wherever it goes, it goes. Like I listen to the Joe Budden podcast, and it's like there's no editing. They're just and half the time they don't even touch on the topics they're talking about. <laughs> there's they have like a piece, they have like a you know they have a sheet. Like oh, we're gonna talk about this. Oh fuck it, we'll just keep talking about this. Whatever. Right. You know? I, I mean, I do like I, I do want to think of a topic mm-hmm. and somewhat stick to it, like. Like Emerson was bringing me through a story, basically. Yeah. And, and 
you and I went from like chronologically, which I think helps in some ways too. Like we didn't go off the rails until the end. I kind of mm. like that aspect of it too. Right. Yeah. I think I think you gotta have a starting point, and usually yeah. it just that's enough, really. You know, you don't need like a whole table of contents or nothing. Right. 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 You don't want to guide it too much, and then it doesn't right. naturally grow. Right. I think this topics is the most important thing is just having those like interesting topics. I think you know, it can't just be like, Well, there's a new game coming out. You know, looking forward to it. You know, it can't <laughs> be like that. Right. But it's it's just funny how obvious this should have been because I had no interest in showing footage of, of the games or anything like that. Uh, I should have thought of this sooner. This is really straight podcast. Podcasts are dope, man. Spaghetti Machine episodes. Pasta Machine. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> Four. I mean, there, there were three before this one. <laughs> I want to know what happened to the other three. I can, I can probably think of it. I'll have some things to go at you. Right. Of course, the next two days and short of rain, shit will come to Damn, that shit was an hour and that was the second recording. Damn, I know what we were talking for a while. We out.